Hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to your reading for the week of August 22nd. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here, Capricorn, and we are going to kick it old school. We're going to look at your first row is going to be your current general energies. Uh, in your next row, we're going to look at any messages from your higher self or your future self, uh, whichever you prefer. In your next row, we're going to look at anything unexpected uh, that could be coming in for you at this time. And in your last row, we're going to look at any messages from your guides. And uh, that'll be that. Uh, already, it looks really, really good. I love it. It's crazy. Um, Taurus also had the sun and the star in their reading. You have them in a different position. By the way, I forgot to say at the end, I'm going to pull three yes or no question cards, and I will give you time to pause the reading and, and uh, think of your questions. But um, Sun and the Stars, like fame and fortune, it doesn't mean you're going to become famous necessarily, um, but it, it is kind of like you getting a lot of attention, or it is also you know, really good for trying to get attention if you're trying to get like a raise or promotion, anything like that. But you start off with this fifth house card that says passion on it. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all, Capricorn. <laughs> I feel that a lot of you could be thinking about either working or starting uh, passion-based businesses or passion-based side hustles or you know any of that stuff. I feel if that's you, I would definitely get moving. I also think it's really funny that there's like this art easel thing right here, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I've been saying to other people as well, I do feel we're entering into this time where kind of creativity is going to be more um, favored or kind of using creative energy could be very good for, you know, increasing your finances, growing your business, being even in relationships, being more creative could be very beneficial. So I feel like embracing that creative energy or at least trying to be creative uh, would be a good idea for you right now. You have the Page of Wands, the Page of Cups, and the Queen of Cups showing up here. I do feel there could be love. Look, you have the Queen and King of Cups as well. Queen and King of Cups in a reading is definitely divine counterparts. You have the Six of Cups as well. The Six of Cups tells me it could be like a past life connection. It could also just be a good connection. I don't read the Six of Cups personally as an ex coming back. And again, I know a lot of readers do, as I always say, but a lot of books on tarot say, do not go back to the past <laughs> with these Six of Cups, like very specifically. Even uh, this deck right here, Golden Tarot, uh, in the book for this deck, it says, do not revisit the past. So, you know, I, I don't really feel like this is a past person. I feel like it's a new person. Could be a past life person. The other thing about the Six of Cups is it can just represent like a really nice childlike connection something that's just like a little bit more easygoing more playful more fun you know something that you're going to enjoy being a part of not something that's like super serious and like let's get married right now and uh, let's follow these rules and do these things right so boring so <laughs> this is much more fun much more lighthearted type of connection that I'm getting here. I also feel that this whole entire reading is saying more play. Every single reading this week has had the collective energy. I'm going to start doing collective energy readings by the way um, at some point soon hopefully. Um, because, it, you know, there ha have been a lot of these readings where there's just major collective vibes going on. And one of those things is more playfulness. Pretty much everyone this week has had this energy of needing to be more playful. Makes sense to me. You know, again, energy is very serious. Page of Wands is a card of adventuring. It's also a card of enthusiasm and excitement and feeling inspired to do things. Sorry, I had to get rid of that. And you have the star here. The star is all about being inspired. So whatever inspires you this week is what I would be working on, you know, as far as projects, businesses, careers are concerned. If something excites you or makes you feel inspired, go do it. Uh, definitely hobbies as well. With that fifth house, fifth house is a card, you know, the house of hobbies, passions. So if you have any hobbies or things that you like to do outside of work, I would definitely make time for those things. And, you know, I would make sure to, you know, carve out time in your day. You do have the Queen of Cups here. So for some of you, I do feel this could be, you know, either you or your person coming in for you, take out resonates. And I feel this is a person who's very heart-based. And I also feel like you're very heart-based at this time. Or, you know, again, even if you're meeting this person in the future, it, it this reading is kind of striking me as a reading where you're, it's like two heart-based people coming together. And I just feel that if this is new love, I feel it'll be great. I would definitely be careful of old love. You know, going this direction right here, uh, paid, uh, Queen of Cups, Seven of Swords to that uh, King of Cups. And even if we go this way, Page of Wands, like going on a new adventure, literally it's saying going on a new adventure, doing things differently is going to lead to the star. So pretty much everything here is saying new love for sure. Uh, with that Page of Wands, you have the Eight of Pentacles. Definitely time to get to work on something 
creative on something that you enjoy doing, uh, Eight of Pentacles is work that pays off. You know, Eight of Pentacles is material success on the horizon. And I definitely see financial improvement. Some, there is some sort of click that is happening probably this week, I feel, for people where finances, you know, if things have been a little bit scary, uh, could be improving. With the Page of Cups, you have the Hierophant. Definitely time to learn as much as you possibly can. Could also be a Taurus that is coming in for you in love. Uh, I do feel that if you're attracting love here, that this is someone who is very similar to you in certain ways. I, like, I don't feel like they're super different, uh, which is interesting because in 2022, the 2022 readings were all about very different love coming in for people. But uh, I feel this person has either a similar kind of upbringing or a similar background. They might not be exactly like you, but there's some sort of similarity there. And the interesting thing I'm getting here is if you're saying to yourself, like, or have been saying to yourself, I'm never going to find someone who has the same like morals, values, ethics, whatever, I actually feel you're attracting a person here who does have very similar morals, values, ethics, things like that. There's also these two keys, which I never pay attention to. <laughs> there are these two keys right here on the Hierophant that you can see right here. And those are really standing out to me in your reading here. And I kind of feel like it's saying that education is the key to success. I know it's like a you know classic saying, but I feel if you're trying to do anything at all this week, learn you, that you'll very easily be able to learn what to do. Uh, with the Queen of Cups, you have the Six of Cups. Like I said, definitely love coming in for you here. And, you know, it's showing up right, they're showing up right next to each other. Look at this, bottom row. Queen of Cups, Six of Cups to the star, to the Hierophant, marriage. Are you kidding me? Uh, this could be you meeting a person that you're going to marry, Capricorn. Again, obviously, this isn't going to just magically appear into your life. So if you're looking for love, get out there, go meet people. You're not going to find it standing on the street. So, or actually, you will. You, you could. Uh, and that, that, that's a little foreshadowing for you. And you probably don't even know what you, I'm talking about, but you won't, right? But anyway, secrets. I have secrets. But anyway, what I would say here is that I would put yourself out there, right? Probably not on the street, but you know, I would go somewhere nice, bookstore, old folks home, you know, where somewhere you find a nice person, right? Uh, next in the area of uh, messages from your future self, you have this card says, have faith in your dreams. Uh, this is the waxing crescent moon. Um, almost every single person has had a card about your, their dreams <laughs> in the top as one of the oracle cards, right? One of the different ones. So I definitely feel there's a lot that you could be dreaming about, things that you're wanting to manifest or create in your life. You have the Wheel of Fortune, the Seven of Swords, and the Six of Cups. The Seven of Swords can be lying, cheating, stealing. Again, I would be super careful of anyone coming back from the past. Although, again, I don't really see this reading as a person coming back from the past. I'm just saying I don't like that direction going from the Queen of Cups to the King of Cups. Although, again, I know it's confusing, but intuitively I feel that's a new person. But if it's a past person who's a water sign, be careful. Moving on. Seven of Swords is about doing things differently. He is stealing these swords from an army that's back here. So instead of going to war, he is stealing the swords from the people so they can't use them in battle the next day. Seven of Swords says you can take control of your destiny right here with the Wheel of Fortune, and you can be very, very successful at this time, but you just maybe have to do things a different way, which again has come up for pretty much everyone. Again, I think that it's Uranus and Taurus. Uranus and Taurus is very fixed energy. You're an Earth sign, by the way, so definitely affects you. And Uranus and Taurus, I think just sometimes I think that it just wants us to come up with other ways of doing things for whatever reason. Probably because the, it, the only having like one or two ways of doing things really isn't freedom, right? Uranus and Taurus is all about values and Uranus and Taurus really wants to teach us to value freedom, the freedom to choose to do things however the hell we want to do them, right? So if you're only doing something one way, probably not going to work. And what I would say here is just if you're trying to start a business, you know, launch a podcast, start a, write a book, create your own movie, get into a relationship, just be open. I think the easiest way to take control with the Wheel of Fortune at this right now, not always true, but right now, would be to just open up to all the different ways that you could potentially do something. And uh, I truly feel that'll set you free. You also have the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups plus the Wheel of Fortune to me is definitely a turnaround. The Six of Cups to me represents a gift from the universe. And the gift we usually receive from the Six of Cups is the ability to make progress, the ability to move forward where maybe we haven't been moving forward or we've been experiencing obstacles. So if you've, if you've been experiencing obstacles, um, you know this can represent a time where there's finally forward progress. And I kind of feel that for you here. I, for whatever reason, this is gonna sound weird as well, um, but I am getting a message that the universe is trying to teach you seasons. <laughs> take, you know, take it how it resonates. I, but I feel 
that the universe is trying to say like, hey, there are always going to be ups and downs, but what are you going to do about it? Even right next to it, you have this temperance card here. It's funny, I was talking about this the other day, how I've noticed that just on YouTube in general, people are like panicking right now because, you know, ads are going down, views are going down. But it's like, I've been on YouTube for over seven years now. And I, you know, I had a channel before this, and I've just noticed the seasons of YouTube. Things always go up, things always go down. I never panic when it happens because it's like I've seen it a million times, right? And um, you know, and when everybody else, and this happens every time, right? I remember back in 2000, whatever, when there was adpocalypse, everybody was crapping their pants, freaking out, right? They, it's always the same every single time, right? But I feel like what the universe is saying is like, what are you gonna do? That's what I've learned in my life because trust me, as a professional failure, right? <laughs> I've learned how to turn things around. Uh, Six of Cups, Temperance. It's like okay, this thing is happening, but how can you improve upon it? There is a way out, but we just have to find it, right? From anything that we could potentially be dealing with. And I feel like that's what this reading is encouraging you to do. With the Wheel of Fortune, Page of Pentacles, Card of Studiousness, again, learn a way out. Uh, I always learn as much as I possibly can, right? Period. I've, ever since... um. You know, I had a failure years ago. I've told the story a million times where I basically did nothing for th three years. But what I did do is I actually learned the whole entire time. I self-educated. And trust me, I'm the type of person, like I always say, I'm dyslex dyslexic. I fell on my head when I was 10 years old, had a traumatic brain injury. I do not retain information like most people. I have to read things like 20 times. I have to like watch videos over and over and over again, take notes and all this other stuff. So if I can do it, you can do it, as I always say. But what I would say is I think that, you know, we had Saturn and Capricorn in your sign in 2017, I would be learning as much as you can. I would be capturing the information as well somewhere and making yourself more valuable. And, um, you know, this isn't saying that you're not valuable. This is about saying that you can only keep so much information up here, right? But you can make yourself super, super valuable. There's actually a system called building a second brain. Look into it if you're a nerd like me. And what I would say is that I think that uh, in the future, doing things like that, having a second brain, having a place of, you know, kind of condensed uh, information based off your job, your career, whatever you're interested in, you can be super valuable. But uh, again, even at the bare minimum, if you just kind of learn your way out of something right now where you maybe feel stuck or learn other ways of doing things, uh, crazy, crazy value for yourself, really. With the Seven of Swords, you have the Hermit, uh, Virgo. I would be careful of Virgo coming back too. <laughs> Virgo or Water Sign, I'm not sure, but I would definitely be careful of that energy. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, also an energy of needing to open up. You know, he has the star in his lantern. You have the star right here. I always say, whenever I get a reading, uh, again, if you have Taurus in your chart, go watch that Taurus reading. Very similar. But what I would say here is if you have, um, you know, really, if you have something inside of you that needs to be revealed to the world, I feel it's time to reveal it. Like if you're waiting to reveal a project, if you're waiting to tell a person you're in love with them or, you know, whatever the case may be, I feel like this is saying you're holding back. That star needs to be revealed. With the Six of Cups, you have the King of Wands. Could be a water, a fire sign, sorry, coming in for you. Regardless, I feel it's someone who is very bold and very assertive. And again, this is probably a very kind of entrepreneurial person that could be coming in for you with this King of Wands as well. But uh, I also feel that could be your entrepreneurial energy, Capricorn. So if you're working on any dreams, uh, anything that could get you attention, sun, star, you know, this looks pretty good to me. Uh, next in the area of the unexpected, you have this milk and honey card. This is a card of like enjoyment, enjoying life. Um, I do like this card, but sometimes it says like, don't get drunk on life. You know, you can see that elephant is in the milk and honey. <laughs> it might be ignoring reality, but at the same time, uh, this, this part of the reading is kind of very much a nice energy. And what we have here is the King of Cups, the temperance card and the star card. The King of Cups, as I always say, he doesn't really care what's going on around him. He's sitting in choppy waters, but he is perfectly fine. He's not worried about what's going on around him. So again, it kind of tells me that no matter what's going on in the world, you could be experiencing this energy, and that could be what's unexpected, is that maybe things seem crazy around you, but maybe your life is perfectly fine or will be in the very near future. I'm also noticing the pools here. The pool on this card and this card they look kind of similar. It's going to be hard to see, but you can see that they both have like very similar swirling energy on there. On the star card, the pool represents the vibrations that we put out into the world. That is the pool of universal consciousness, basically the energy of everything. And so it kind of represents the vibrations that you put out into the world. She's also pouring this water onto the land. And again, it kind of represents the same thing. She's pouring water from the pool of universal consciousness onto the world. And it's just 
spreading out into the world. It represents a couple of different things. It represents what's possible for one person as possible for you. So that's why it's a card of inspiration. If you need inspiration, or if you're hoping to accomplish something, going and finding someone who's done it is usually a good idea. Uh, I would say right now, I, I, like I would do it. Like if you're trying to start a business and you need some inspiration and you're looking for some people to look up to, I would definitely go find those people. It could be on YouTube or whatever. What I would say is don't get too caught up in how they did it, right? Because you're going to have your own journey. So I think the danger of Uranus and Taurus is like using a person as an example and saying, I have to do exactly like them. We already talked about this. So I would just make sure that you stay open, but uh, definitely a very good card. Uh, another pool right here that one foot in, one foot out. Same thing with uh, star card, one foot in kind of, she's kind of like testing the waters there on the star card. So I feel like this is saying uh, you, you either need to get in or get out <laughs> with this energy Capricorn. Whatever it is you're doing, I would I would make the transformation. I feel like we are in a very transformative time, but it's almost like we're all inside of an egg. In you know these times where we have you know recessions or whatever's going on in the world, these are deeply transformative times. People always come out the other side different in some way. I feel like this is saying like um, when time you know when the time comes for you to hatch, right? Whenever this is over or whatever, like what will you have turned into? I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you have to answer that question, Capricorn. So don't, don't ask me. I heard some of you asking me. With the King of Cups, you have the Two of Wands. Two of Wands is about taking the lead, making something happen, and really trusting your feelings, which I've been a big fan of recently. I, I really feel like nothing is going to provide us with answers, including tarot. I just said it to someone yesterday that really it's like, you know, I, I'm a big fan of taking breaks from tarot, number one, if you're using it and it's becoming addictive. But number two, it's like, you know, I think all the answers are inside of us. I love tarot. I do tarot because, you know, really I'm more into the imagery and more into, you know, uh, the mess, you know, different messages that are more kind of um, making your life better type of messages, right? Uh, so I'm more into that side of tarot, but mostly the imagery in the history uh, of tarot in general. So that's why I do it. Um, but <laughs> what I would say here is, you know, again, all the answers are inside of you. With the Temperance card, you have the Three of Pentacles. Teamwork makes a dream work, of course, Capricorn. Wouldn't be a Capricorn reading without it. Uh, it's also a card of quality work, and I feel like you are going to be entering into a time where your work is just quality in general. I would dive into that pool, whatever that pool is, the pool of transformation. What you could be transforming is your, you know, you could be going from one job to another job. You could be going from a job to a business or from no relationship to being in a relationship or whatever. You know what is killing me right here is I just noticed it. Oh, this is not what this is, Capricorn, but I'm going to show you something. Th this almost looks like a fish right here to me, right above my finger. Can you see that green fish there? And you know, all this water showing up here, there's obviously the fish or the whale really on the back of the King of Cups. Uh, fish sometimes represent like small wins or creating more small wins in your life. And I do, I'm, I've probably said this to you before, but it's popping into my head. So I'm going to say it, small wins would be good. But the star card, you have the two of cups, perfect match if there's love coming in for you. Could be an Aquarius. I feel like this person has Aquarius in their chart. Could be like an Aquarius rising. You could be an Aquarius rising, I suppose. Or you could have, a, a, you know, a bunch of Aquarius in your chart somewhere. Um, but what I would say here is I feel that this is love. This is like big picture love. You know, there's this, uh, on the back of the star card, there's this uh, ibis above my finger. The bird there represents seeing the big picture. But I feel like this is a big picture relationship where there's much more, to, it's not, you know, it's very full. I feel like it's not a hollow relationship. It's not like missing something. So I don't know. I like it. Uh, next in the area of messages from your guides, you have this camel card. The camel represents resourcefulness. You know, camels are able to survive in the desert with very little. So I feel resourcefulness is going to be your best friend right now with this energy. And I feel like you have a lot more kind of at your fingertips than you realize. I feel you're much more resourceful uh, than you realize. In this row, you have the sun, the seven of cups in the hierophant. The sun, of course, is happiness. Like I said, fame and fortune. I'm getting something about your destiny here as well. The sun, I feel, is tied to your, the wheel of fortune. The wheel of fortune represents your destiny in the sense that it kind of represents your personal vision for your life, where you see your life going. And again, in that row, you have have faith in your dreams card, right? So I feel like you need to have faith in your dreams. But I also feel this is kind of talking about your destiny because... It's something that will lead to total fulfillment. The sun is the best card in the deck. It is happiness, but really it's total fulfillment. Uh, next, you have the seven of cups. A lot of, Again, I keep getting the word fingertips popping into my head here. So something at your fingertips or mm, some, this could have to do with a computer or something. You could be creating a business on a computer or typing, but you know, I feel like something's at your fingertips. It's like right 
it's right in front of you. you. You can almost touch it. Seven of Cups is kind of being spoiled for choice. It is interesting as well that I've just noticed throughout 2022, the Seven of Cups has come up a lot, but I feel like it's more talking about just getting rid of the excess. And sometimes I feel whenever we start something, we feel like there are certain steps that we have to go through, like to get into a relationship. We feel like it should go a certain way. We feel these steps, but it's like, why, why? <laughs> you know, why does it have to go a certain way? What, where, who makes up these rules? Same thing with the business. It's like, I've talked to so many people in business where they're, they think, like even I've talked to people about YouTube where they think they have to do all these things to get the YouTube started. I'm like, no, just get started. Like you don't need any of that stuff. It's just extra. You're putting extra work on yourself, right? And I kind of get that feeling here where your guys are saying, don't make something more complicated than it needs to be. And uh, of course, uh, Hierophant, learn as much as you possibly can right now because I feel it'll be extremely valuable to you. You have the Eight of Pentacles as well and the Hierophant twice. This is really you taking something to the next level, learning something, you know, as deep as you possibly can, right? And that's what I would be doing here. With the Sun, you have the Five of Pentacles, uh, feeling left out in the cold, but I'm not really sure what this is about. I don't know. Do not call attention to your weaknesses. You know, Five of Pentacles says, do not call attention to your weaknesses. Things could be going very well for you and you could be, you know, use, still using negative words on yourself or whatever. I would be careful of that. I'm going to clarify that again. Yeah, you have the emperor here. Emperor is like control. I feel like if you feel controlled or feel like something is controlling you, that this could partially be negative words. So be careful of that. With the seven of cups, you have the seven of cups, basically the universe saying I meant what I said. So get rid of the extra. If you're thinking there's all these extra things you have to do, no. With the hierophant, you have the nine of wands. Of course, you have the nine of wands. Nine of Wands is a card of experimentation. It's my card of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. So I feel it'll be a great time for you to experiment in like business, work, love, pretty much everything. But uh, that's that. All right, we're gonna pull three yes or no question cards here, Capricorn. So feel free to pause this video, but we're gonna do one, uh, two, and three right here. So one, two, and three. I'm using the Golden Tarot Cat Black version, but feel free to pause. So for question number one, I would say yes, you have the Six of Wands, which is a card of success and excellence and also attention, so yes. Uh, next for question number two, I would say yes, Eight of Wands, love it. Uh, quick success coming in for you. And for and that, I'm getting something about approval here as well. Um, I feel like you need to trust your intuition on something also if you're waiting for something on that Eight of Wands. Uh, for question number three, I would say yes, Queen of Cups. So uh, definitely yes, three yeses. Looks really good to me here, Capricorn. So thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your Sun, Moon, and Rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.